Ackerman started the process from a creative place, thinking about what he wanted to say. Yes. And so when he became the creative director of Eurovision, he drew himself a little chart. In the center of the chart, he had a portrait of Ukraine. And we think, like, metaphorically speaking, the, the parts that would stem out of this portrait, they wanted to show what Ukraine looks like now. For many years, the symbol of Ukrainian culture was very stereotypical. It was the woman in Ukrainian clothing with a flower crown and the ribbons in her hair. It was a very surface level stereotype. It was Herman's idea to do the digital metro moment where Kalush was in Kyiv. Um, and so this idea of a metro line uniting all the people, the first first week of the full-scale invasion, all of the televised programming and all of the shows that would have happened in Ukraine were in the subway stations down below. It was for safety of the people that were involved in the creation process and all of the audiences. So this idea of a metro line was really symbolic. But considerations very quickly moved from the artistic to the practical considerations of how to coordinate between two public broadcasters 1,500 miles away from each other. So with the lighting designer, um, the process was pretty automated. Once they knew all of the Ukrainian numbers, they started working pretty much straight away. From a creative side, trying to make those initial decisions, that was around October through February. And then February until May, they were working diligently, programming. Everything was online. It was all in one program. Program. Everyone saw the changes immediately because they were able to put in edits right into the online program. They actually had weekly meetings. Because of the war, there were a lot of factors that could have disrupted these meetings, but the Ukrainian team was there every single week. They would take the calls from bomb shelters. If they had any big decisions that had to be done, they would do electronic voting. Even in the process leading up to your vision, Eurovision is very dedicated to a, a robust voting system. <laughs> it's very cool that 90% of the time the votes would be identical. The teams were actually on the same page most of the time. Sometimes the Ukrainian team and the English team were working on the same idea. And then when they would come together, they would actually put those two ideas together. There was actually a Bible, a document of every number where everything was described by the second. And so there was a section in this document where Herman wrote his ideas and what he wanted to see as well. Then they would test it out in a studio and then they would also get it on stage in rehearsals and work it out. Despite the level of organization, challenges still cropped up in the most surprising places. The department that we haven't touched on that was the most difficult was the costumes department. Because all of the costumes had to be made in the UK. There were actually a lot of ethnic Ukrainian outfits in the grand final. It was really important to show the rethinking of Ukrainian clothing and attire into street style of what Ukrainians uh, might be wearing today. And so all of the artists were dressed by famous Ukrainian fashion houses and fashion designers. And also for the Kalush number, the whole the whole number started with a Ukrainian famous embroidery, and then it would come apart by the strings. And every single country's flag that would come up would also come apart by the, the strings. And this was symbolically showing that Ukraine is sewing together the future of the free world, the future of democracy, and the future of Europe. Eurovision is normally complicated. In the middle of a war, even more so. Everything was delayed to the point where they had to start designing the set before they even knew what city, and therefore what arena, the contest was going to be in. And that's not all. Uh, 
there was a version of the contest where Ukraine wasn't going to be in the postcards at all. It was a challenge because a lot of parts they wanted to film, they weren't able to film in Ukraine. The first challenge was the format of how they were going to be able to pull this off in the first place. So it was decided by Suspina that in order to get these shots, they were going to do it from a flying camera. They were unable to film in certain places for the war. So they had to ask every single uh, location that they would film in. They had on their list ideas to film in Odessa, in Kherson, in Mykolaiv, but they were unable to get the permissions. Herman, I just want to say thank you so much for helping us understand a little bit of the enormous task it is to put on a show like you did. This was really incredible, Herman. And Sashko, thank you. Thank you so yes, much for thank helping. Thank you, Sashko, too. as well. <laughs> Of the mysteries of the Euroverse.